just um, get a few details about. Here's Jody now. Hey, Jody, welcome. Hi, Mark. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. Great to good. see you here. So Let's we'll see. just set your screen up. So first of all, hide the. Um, Okay, I see here I'm sharing maybe not the right screen. Let me try that again. No worries. So Jodie's the founder of Org Design Works um, and she helps um, leaders reduce the hierarchy and bureaucracy. Um, oh, here we go. It's, so Hope that looks better. That's better. Okay, great. Do you want to um, so walk us through your presentation, Jodie? Sure. Thanks very much, Mark. So, yeah, great to be here uh, with everyone. So I hope everyone's doing fine. Um, I'm Jodie Goulden from Org Design Works, and we help leaders reduce hierarchy and bureaucracy by designing better ways of working. Um, and so I work as a consultant helping companies. Prior to that, um, I worked for a long time as a leader in a big organization. So I'm, I'm talking to you sometimes from the perspective um, of working inside a big organization and also bringing uh, my experience of working with with a lot of organizations. And so, you know, why, why I'm here at API Days um, and not specifically talking about APIs, but um, I work with a lot of organizations who are going through transformation and change. Um, and I believe that's what we all have in common. I, what I see is that um, technology, the design of the technology that we use um, and the design of the organization uh, that we create goes hand in hand. I'm, I'm really always curious and appreciate working with uh, people on the technology side. I think we need to really work hand in hand on that. Um, but I probably, think, yeah. Yeah, I think that's something that the audience will love to hear. Thank, uh, Jody, because the, so we're in the API circles, we've got a, um, a mantra, if you like, called the Conway, Con, called Conway's Law which says that the way you design an organization will affect the way you design your uh, software systems. So getting the organization right, and a lot of the frustrations that API um, people within organizations have is that the APIs are meant to be exposing shared services that are then gonna be possible across, um, but shared by multiple lines of business or multiple departments. And in the hierarchy, um, uh, siloed world, you don't get to share those. So it's almost like the organization set up against you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly the reason why I come to tech conferences to kind of find people uh, that we can talk about that stuff and figure out how to do it better. Because it's definitely, you know, it's a big challenge that I see as well. So yeah, so I want to I want to start by sharing with you all like a really short, a really brief personal story um, about what it felt like for me when I worked as a leader in a big, uh, complex organization. Um, and in this story, uh, my team and I were responsible for global learning programs. And the project that we have is to roll out a new program for the whole company worldwide. So, you know, when I get this project, I'm really excited and, and totally motivated and and I know that I got this opportunity because I have a track record in dealing with difficult diverse stakeholders and uh, you know we start off I have a really amazing team I have a great boss I have a good budget so everything should be fine but once the project gets started um, it turns out to be much, much harder than I ever imagined some of the stakeholders are really difficult they're against they're against the project and some of them are quite high up in the hierarchy and uh, so you know I'm really feeling a lot of pressure and my team starts to get frustrated pretty quickly and um, it turns out we're behind on most of our milestones because we just can't get all the different divisions all the silos as you said Mark to go in the same direction no matter how much we really listen to their concerns, we adjust the content, we try and adapt. Um, but things are things are not going really well kind of halfway through. And the thing is, though, I'm still really determined because, you know, I've been doing this a long time and I know how to navigate this complex matrix structure. 
you know, I know how to win people over. I know how to keep my team inspired. I know how to, you know, compromise and I know when to stand my ground because, you know, I'm really proud that I'm a leader in this company. And finally, finally, after countless battles, endless discussions, compromises, we actually get the thing implemented. And so then I'm ecstatic. My team is walking on air and my boss is talking about this project and my peers are congratulating me. And this is one of those moments where I really love my job and I love to work as a leader and all the overcome all these kind of challenges. But when I look back now on that experience and others just like it, what I see is that so much time is spent on navigating the organization hierarchy. So, you know, I'm still really proud of, of all that we accomplished. I think it's fantastic. But the cost of that organization bureaucracy is very high. This project probably was about two or three months work, the actual work to get it done. But it took us well into the third year before we got it implemented. So the learning really is that there's a very high cost of navigating the organization structure. So some of you might be saying, well, that's just the way it is in big companies. And at the time, that's exactly what I would have said too. I would have said, yeah, if you want to be successful around here in this company, you have to be good at navigating the hierarchy. You have to be politically savvy. You have to have uh, good skills at getting through conflicts and you have to be really resilient. And I would have said, yes, I am a leader. I'm really experienced. I can handle all that. But the thing is, what if we didn't have to handle all that? What if we could design our organizations in a different way so that we could really perform and be effective. Um, and that led me to start to look at why our organizations are designed the way they are. Why that this is great. I'm excited to hear this because so what tends to happen again with the API world is that there will be the C level um, uh, sponsorship. So they've so someone at, the, at that level has said, yes, we want to have um apis as the way we're going to be doing this but then it goes through all of the lines of management that hierarchy that you're talking about and those people aren't sold on the mm -hmm. apis so then when you're so you've got the c level but all of the middle management and lower that is going to be that actually is saying yes or no or allowing the collaboration how what how were you able and what, what are some of the what what do people need to be aware about in that sort of hierarchy structure where mm. they're going to be able to affect the change or yeah, yeah. what's the, what's the where's the opportunity there yeah it's a great question because you know it always feels like something's getting stuck in the middle management and you know my perspective is you know having been there and worked there um one of the big learnings for me is actually it's it's not the people this is not not bad people, people are really, really wanting to make change, but somehow still everything gets stuck. So if you want to, you know, I want to go back a bit in history <laughs> briefly to uh, let's say the second half of the 19th century, let's look at where this organization came from. So um, during the industrial revolution, when assembly lines and mass production allowed manufacturing firms to grow very fast, and they figured out that the best way to organize was, let's call it the pyramid hierarchy. It looks like this. And that was, it, it really worked. It was the most efficient. And the most efficient companies are the ones that succeeded. And actually, this model worked so well that we've kept it pretty much until today. So this could be what you're looking at here could be an organization chart uh, from today, or it could be from 100 years ago or more. And the thing is that um, compared to 150 years ago, things are really different today. So this, what I want to explain to you is why maybe this doesn't really 
work anymore, this organization, or actually it's changing. So the things that are different today are, first of all, that employees in organizations are highly educated and skilled. So we no longer need all of the people at the top to do the thinking and all of the people at the bottom of the pyramid to do the thinking. And secondly, and this is what I think you'll relate to, Mark, information or data is now everywhere. So with the technology that we have, we can make information available to everyone at the same time on demand. And so this pyramid hierarchy structure, which is actually an information processing system, if you're looking for information to cascade through the organization structure, that's no longer necessary. Not only is it no longer necessary, but it's actually holding us back from getting things done fast. Um, and finally, when you're in a situation like we are today with a lot of disruption where change is happening very fast, and especially this year, we've experienced that a lot, then big organizations, they need to, and actually there's great examples where they have done this, they put aside the central steering, they put aside the bureaucracy, and they enable people to get things done everywhere in the organization. So these kind of differences that we have uh, are the reason why actually organizations are changing. So I know I don't need to convince people that we should change. Actually, it's inevitable, this change. Um, and so what I want to ask us to do today, really, is to imagine an organization in the future where there is no leadership positions, where you're part of a team, let's say, without a leader. And if you work in a, you know, a fairly new organization or a startup, maybe you're saying, ah, yeah, we're already doing that. But if you work in or with a larger international company, then that's already a kind of a radical idea. So what we, we think about with the organization, the way it works, is that with the traditional hierarchy, what is it about the position of leader that is different to the other positions? And it comes down to three things. And those things are, sorry, let me just go back. Those things are ability, accountability, and authority. So as leaders, we are expected to have abilities that are superior to people who report to us. We're expected to have accountability for the performance of the team. And we're expected, we're, we're given the authority to make decisions that the people in the team are not allowed to make, right? So all of those things are the reason why the whole hierarchy is working. But actually, there are already approaches that we can use to share and distribute that authority and accountability to people in the team, such as the advisory process, which is a process where any employee can make a decision after asking advice from people with relevant expertise and people who might be affected by the decision before that they are acting. What about with, um, so with APIs, there's the whole, um, uh, that one of the things we do is we build governance structures so that, we go, that we've got standardised design patterns for our APIs. But then that could, or that the governance could be used as a method of um, reducing that hierarchy, couldn't it? Because like if there was already those sorts of standardised processes that have been agreed on by a whole range of team players, then if you're building and managing your APIs to those governance processes, you don't need it to go up the chain to get approval and then back down again. Yeah, exactly. So governance is is the mechanism, actually, when you're designing an organisation or when you're designing the technology. And I love that you said that because I think, especially now, we're starting to see some situations where the, let's say the API governance is leading, it's pulling the organization with that. Um, but unfortunately, what I still see very often is when that, let's say the API governance is not congruent or it's in conflict with the organization governance. So do you have, you know, you have the choice, are you then applying the legacy organization governance 
into your newly designed technology? Or are you able to have that dialogue and that conversation where you say, hey, look, we need the governance of the, the organization and the technology to be working in the same way. Otherwise, the culture of the organization is going to get in the way from things happening. Right. Do you think, so you were talking about, I mean, and the theme of the conference is the new normal and the, you know, what happens next post-COVID, um, that, that'll still be around for a while. But then because people are working online and they're using like asynchronous information and it's bubbling up, so it's coming, you know, there'll be an alert that comes from Slack because someone's filled in a form or a new sales happened or whatever. So it's the people on the ground who have the information first almost rather than this top-down hierarchy giving the information. How is that all influencing? um, is, Is that creating the right conditions where people are willing to reduce that hierarchy then? I really hope so. I'm excited about this because that's what that I'm seeing exactly the same thing, right? So as we have moved to work remotely, and it's for most of us quite a big shift, you know, I think, um, and we're seeing work happening. I mean, personally, I've learned so much this year about, you know, working asynchronously and working online, and I'm working in ways I never thought I would. Um, but what so what I'm finding with the customer network that I talk to is People are kind of figuring it out as they go along, which is a great learning. Um, but a lot of what we're working on right now is actually related to remote work or what we would say is hybrid work, is finding a way for organizations to slow down and look at it kind of step by step or systematically and actually design what's working and, and scaling that through the organization. So I'm really optimistic, Mark, I hope (laughs) that this is offering us fantastic opportunities to get the design right of the way that we're working. Let's talk about that. Um, We've got a few, we've got about um, seven more minutes. So if anyone's got a question, please add them to the stage. But from the previous um, API days um, hosting, one, so there's been two issues. One is like those in sort of startup um, uh, roles who want to apply these sorts of new practices and how they will go about it. And then the other one is those who need, who are working from home and now need to sort of manage up. So they need to actually help their managers change to this sort of um, new model that you're talking about. So mm-hmm. maybe can we just look at, while we're waiting for questions, can we look at um, those two? So for the startup or those, someone who has got a bit of influence in how the organization is structured what should they be focusing on Mm -hmm. well what i what i'd really like to do is talk about it a bit from the perspective of a leader because if you're a leader or or not then i i think it's really useful to see you know what does it feel like if you are a leader or if you do have influence if you're if you're leading a meeting or that kind of thing and there's it, it comes down to it comes down to actually behavior. That's where you can start in, in your own team. What are the things you can do already that will help teams to be, to help people work together and to be ready for organization change? And these three things I want to talk about are purpose, mindfulness, and listening. So, so I'd, I'd love to run quickly through that. Yeah. Um, and tell you why that's relevant. I mean, the first thing is purpose. And that is, you know, for those of us who are lucky enough to be kind of, purpose driven in our work we know how that can be really motivating and it you know it gets you off in the morning and it gets you thinking hey what am I doing today it's going to be great Um, and the research supports that so people have a sense of purpose are actually performing more effectively Um, and this and I want to say it doesn't mean having this you know fancy poster on the wall with a great headline saying you know we save the world or whatever we do but also knowing what you personally can bring to your work that contributes to something bigger. So if you're a leader of a team or part of a team, then you can already have a conversation or if you're in a startup, have the conversation about what's what's the purpose, invite everyone to share about what's their own personal contribution and start to create a purpose for the team or the whole company. Um, and that will already have an impact on how people work together. The second, the second thing... Oh, do you, I, I want to, maybe I'll run through it. You run through it. Otherwise, we're going to run out of time. Um, the second thing is mindfulness. 
And mindfulness is about just being aware of your thoughts and feelings in the present moment. So when people, you know, they just come to work with their work persona, but if they can come with a bit more of their personal feelings and what's on their mind, then people can relate to each other at a deeper human level. And that means that people will work more effectively together. And this might sound like, whoa, how can we bring mindfulness to work? But here's something super simple. Next time you have a meeting, start with a check-in round with an open question. Invite, l Listen to everyone to share what, what's on their mind or what's distracting them. And then just notice if the meeting actually runs better or differently. And the third thing is about listening. And and listening, you might have the feeling like I sometimes do that, that everyone's just, tr you know, trying to get their voice heard and that things get uh, influenced by those people who speak the most. Um, and there's a quote by Stephen Covey, you've probably heard it, people don't listen with the intent to understand, they listen with the intent to reply. Um, but if you're a good listener, if you're able to bring listening into workplace, then it's really proven to have a positive effect on innovation or collaboration and teamwork. And there's some great research around psychological safety, um, such as the study, as such as the project that Google did to figure out which teams are working better, and some research out of MIT, which says that the best performing teams are the ones where every person is listening and talking in about equal measure. And we know that doesn't just happen by itself, right? So this is all about creating psychological safety and creating the environment where every voice is heard. So a lot of the work that I do with teams is about embedding practices in day-to-day -day work for that to happen. So if you've got, you know, if you start with yourself and your team and you're working on these kind of behavioral changes, this is really the foundation for creating flatter hierarchies, you know, ways of working where people are more empowered and getting through some of those big challenges that are behind the whole, you know, legacy hierarchy model. That's awesome. Do you want to put up your um, slide to show the how people can get in contact with you? Um, please. The So purpose, mindfulness and listening is our solutions to create that environment that's going to reduce that hierarchy and give us the opportunity to rebuild teams in a new way yeah i think while it's not a shortcut to dissolve the whole organization structure that takes a lot more org design work and technology sure. support um, but if you're a leader and you're thinking well it's kind of really scary that all of the organ you know middle management is going to disappear actually i think there's a positive message there and that is it's not about pushing down the leaders it's about inviting the team to step up and share that authority and then seeing how, you know, how brilliantly the team can perform if you can get that to happen. Okay, wonderful. How do people get in touch with you then if they, if they want to follow up and do some more work with you around um, uh, team structure, applying some of this? Yeah, so I'm on LinkedIn. That's a great place to contact me. And uh, my website is orgdesignworks.com. I think you could see that on the screen. Um, and yeah, I'd really love to talk to uh, people like you, Mark, who've got uh, all this experience in designing the technology. Wonderful. Thanks very much. We There's been no questions come through and we're right on um, five past 11 Paris local time. So we'll jump we off. Well. So we did <laughs> great. That was fantastic. Really, Thanks, I mean, it Mark. fits so well with the theme of the conference. So really great way to start our sessions this afternoon. Thanks, Jody. All right, Mark. Bye-bye.